All right, welcome back to Beyond the Arc. John, Ashley, and Bill here on a Tuesday. Check out our YouTube page. You can find that at Beyond the Arc CBS. Please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. Uh, all right, there was a report this week from Shams at The Athletic that uh, during the Lakers coaching search that LeBron is staying out of the process. Uh, according to Shams, he, quote, made it clear this is the organization's decision. Uh, before we get into whether anybody actually buys this, Bill, uh, what have you heard here? <laughs> Uh, did he did uh, Shams uh, did he make sure to delete the um, Rich Paul like facts that came over before he put no okay I'm just checking I'm just I mean uh. it's true Ash it's all right so here's so to that point I, I've talked to a couple people in the Lakers organization and they gave the same answer and very in starkly one was one was CBS Sports family friendly one wasn't but it's the same message this stuff ain't true of course he's of course he has involvement. Of course he has, look, it, maybe it's true in a semantic sense. I don't know. Maybe he's doing the thumbs up, thumbs down, right? Yes or no. But the idea that LeBron isn't involved is silly. I will say this, that this is like, so there's echoes of having covered this guy, LeBron every day back in the day in Miami, where he is strategic and he does things on purpose. And I just want to, this is what struck me. I know nobody thinks he's leaving LA. If I had to bet money, it's like the Celtics beating the Pacers. I think LeBron's going to stay in LA. But this does offer some plausible deniability if his intention is to get his guy, J.J. Redick, that job. And that is the belief within the Lakers organization and outside of it that that guy's the front runner. And then LeBron decide he, decides he wants to lead anyway. It gives him the chance to say, I, why are the Lakers mad at me? I wasn't, I wasn't involved. I, they, they, they did their thing. So LeBron operates on multiple levels. And if, I don't think he's leaving L.A., but it did strike me as it's a really good message to put out there through – whoever will put it out there. If you are even remotely open to the possibility of leaving, if you haven't made up your mind as LeBron James, cause you don't know where Bronny is going to be drafted. And there's a world where you go somewhere else. You want the impression to be, you didn't absolutely screw over your Lakers organization by insisting on a coach. Listen, Ashley, you look skeptical. My whole thing is like, if you're going to lie, at least let it be believable. You know what I mean? Like a whole point of a lie is so that that's you true. don't get caught in it. <laughs> and that's why most people are bad liars. Nobody believes this. Nobody believes yeah. this. LeBron has been in the league since he is 18 years old. And for most of his career, he has had control over the organization that he is a part of in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's, con it's you know, control over which players are joining that team, whether it's via draft or via trade, whether it's the head coach, whether it's the assistant coach, whether it's who's allowed to sit courtside. I'm being, you know, exaggerating, but, you know, you get the picture. Nobody believes that LeBron James, the year that Bronny is in the draft, the year that the Lakers get bounced from the playoffs once again by the Denver Nuggets, the year that LeBron is visibly frustrated with Darvin Ham, along with other people who are also were also uh, frustrated with him as well, Anthony Davis and things like that. Nobody believes that this man is not having some sort of conversations with Rob Palenka, with the organization as a whole about who is going to be coaching him coaching him and the team next year. Come on now. They're looking for their fifth head coach in 10 years. And you're telling me that LeBron James has not had any conversations like, I like this guy, I like this guy, I like this guy, I don't like this guy, that he's just, you know what? You guys handle it. I trust you. I'll trust the process. I don't need to be involved. You got it. It's all good. Come on now. If that's the case, I have, um, some oceanfront property in uh, in Kansas to sell to you. Be for real. It doesn't make any sense. It's not true. He, here's how you know when NBA people are lying, when they protest too much. Ash, the reason I know that Patrick Ewing should not have been a New York Nick is because I used to constantly just joke about the cold envelope as a joke, just a joke. All these platforms. I was filling in for Jim Rome once, and I guess people watch that show a lot. And I made the same joke, and I heard from three different people in the NBA league office with an hour of getting off that show. Hey, haven't talked to you about how you're doing. That's not funny. That's not funny about the cold envelope. That's how I knew the cold envelope was real. The last time I got complaints from LeBron James people was something I wrote a year ago, maybe, about how basically he was in control. Same thing. He's in control of the organization. And I heard from so many LeBron people that this was outrageous who normally don't care at all what I have to say. I was like, oh. Clearly, LeBron is pulling all of the string. He is, yes, to your point, he's pulling every string, and everybody knows it. Yeah, I, nobody believes this. I, I mean, it, like, he's been yeah. 
he's been rumored to be a shadow GM uh, for his entire career, for all the many reasons that Ashley outlined. His like, nickname it, is Lay GM. Like, come on. People on Twitter <laughs> refer to like, him as Lay GM. There is a reason for that. We are fully aware of who controls what in that organization. And LeBron has a lot of control. And there's it, nothing wrong with that. I would Listen, if I had control in the New York Knicks organization and I was a player, you think I would hide that? I would lavish in it. I would relish in it. I'd be like, yep, I made that call. It was all me. Why does he even care to hide it at this point? We know. John, you've covered finals, so you know that, you, that media are not allowed in practice during finals practice. You go, you do media availability, and they get you the hell out of the building. And I was with Jim Jackson doing work once, and he left his bag basically courtside. I'm like, Jim, we can't go into practice. The, the Cavs are practicing. And Jim Jackson does what Jim Jackson wants to do. So we walked in, sure. and LeBron James was leading the practice, and David Blatt was sitting by himself. I don't know that he was playing Tetris or on his it, – and it was just <laughs> – oh and God. I guess, like, we all sort of knew LeBron ran things, but it was too – and I wasn't supposed to be there, and I don't think the NBA knew until right now. To see LeBron – and at one point, I'm like, Jim, let's get out of here. And Jim's like, this is amazing. And at one point, I think David, like, looked up and tried to say something. LeBron was just like, no, ignore him. And just So, like, yeah, like – LeBron runs things. It's not even a, it's not even a myth or a rumor. He just runs stuff and he puts people in a corner if he wants to. So uh, of these coaching candidates, then who do we think that? I mean, obviously the big rumor is that J he wants JJ Redick, and JJ Redick has to. It looks like finish out his ESPN playoff uh, responsibilities before he's ready to jump ship here. But who do we think would be best suited for? LeBron, I mean, is it J.J. Redick as podcast partner? Because there have been a lot of people who are like, all right, well, let's just say that J.J. gets this job. Is the qu the quote-unquote coach and the top player, are they, like, doing a podcast after the you know, oh after gosh. games and <laughs> in between? You know what I mean? Like, good there, were, there were people, Udonis Haslam was mentioning this. He said, you're going to get a lot of side eyes in the locker room if all of a sudden these two guys are splitting a bottle of wine and broadcasting everything that's happening with the Lakers afterwards. <laughs> I mean, it, it honestly depends, like, are the Lakers serious about winning? And this is no knock to J.J. Redick. I think he's a phenomenal basketball mind. He's so smart. He is. He's but extremely smart. He's never been a head coach. He's never even been an assistant coach in the professional. I know he coaches, like, I think his kids' league and stuff. Like, it's not the same thing. So if you're trying to go ahead and actually win, not to say that J.J. Redick isn't a coach that could potentially help you win, but wouldn't you want to go ahead and have some level of NBA experience from the coaching side? There's only a few names on the list that are actually, that actually have some sort of resume in this league. And you keep making the same mistakes when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers. You're going for the easy route. You're going for the easier coach in terms of who is the most moldable, who is the one that can be controlled the most? Who is the one that, you know, can go ahead and hit all the talking points in front of the media, whether those talking points are coming from them, the organization, LeBron. But you're not really focusing on who can win you a championship. And last time I checked, the Los Angeles Lakers are a championship-winning organization, and I would think they want to get back to that. And in order to do that, you need to go ahead and pick somebody who has been in some realm of the NBA as a head coach. And as much as I like J.J. Redick, he is not that guy. I'm going to respectfully I disagree, Ash, and say they're, they're not a championship-level team. And whoever they hire no, as a organization, coach. like as a whole, the Lakers yeah, are no, a I get it. organization. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. But they're not going to win a championship again with LeBron. And I don't know if you hire someone, how much they're the coach as much as a partner with LeBron. And to John's point, John, I'll let you go. But I, I might hire JJ Redick. I mean, you have to do your evaluations behind the scene and, and, and make sort of different assessments. And I know the Steve Kerr comparison is a little off because Kerr was in a front office before that, but people have come from television and been successful. And so I'm, if I'm the Lakers, especially if you think it keeps LeBron, I, I might hire. I think I, I think I would just hire JJ Redick and hope it works. In in a vacuum, I really like JJ Redick. I, I worked with him at a previous stop. I've interviewed him a ton. As Ashley said, he's very smart. I think that he would be a very good NBA head coach. He's obviously wanted to get into the NBA as a head coach. He had interviews with the Raptors and the Hornets, and now the hot rumor, obviously, the rumor du jour is that he goes to the Lakers. I don't know that I love this job for him. I like a job for him, but I'm not entirely convinced that this is the one. Uh, a lot of LeBron stuff happening always. And of course, uh, as a result of that, there's also stuff that's happening with his son, Bronny James, who gave an interview recently that was very interesting about what goes into being 
part of that family. We're going to talk about that next right here on Beyond the Arc on CBS Sports Network.